to the trailhead, made it to the trailhead. It's chilly out, one degree out, one degree. That's pretty chilly. I know that's nothing compared to the polar vortex in the Midwest, but still cold for us folk here in Colorado. So I'm gonna get my gear on in the back. Uh, let's do this, Quandry Peak, 14,000 feet above sea level. Big bad wolves today, big bad wolves today. It's gonna be nice today, it's gonna be nice. The sun is coming out actually right now. Oh, it's peeking through the trees. Thanks. Thanks. One hour and 15 minutes to the top of Quandry Peak, February 1st, 2019. One hour and 15 minutes. We will take it. That was fun. I haven't run up uh, Quandry Peak in, uh, let's see, sorry, I've never run Quandry. And I've the last time I hiked it was 2012. So I haven't been up here in a while. As you know, YouTube, I love Grays and Tories. If you live in Colorado, you know like those are two 14ers that are close to Denver where I live so I can get to the trailhead in an hour. So up here, but in sorry, but in the in the winter time it's a lot harder to get up Grays and Tories. You got to be careful up there. Whereas Quandary, it's more doable in the winter. So oh my goodness, I think I think YouTube I just found a new winter training ground. This is awesome. Take a peek.
Oh baby, oh baby, Quandary Peak. All right, so total time, an hour and 49 minutes, hour 49, looks like six and a half miles, so a little further than I expected. So that's good, And uh, but I don't, it's not, my watch is not telling me the elevation gain right now, I'll have to upload it first. I uh, look, I'm guessing it was about 4,000 feet of vertical gain in descent, so, woo, baby. Oh man, I had that first 14er of 2019, and yes, I enjoy going up high, getting that deep, deep aerobic stimulus up there. Oh my goodness, it's just like, I, it's not a lung burn by any means, but it's just like a good, solid aerobic um, effort. Like you're just breathing hard up there no matter, no matter, especially above, once you get above 13,000 feet, it just like hits you. At least that's when it usually hits me. All right. Back to Denver. Yes, we are going to talk about double run, double runs. What is a double run? Why do a double run? Why <laughs> double run? Why do a double run? Why not to do a double run? And so we're going to break it down and listen, I'm getting ready for a sea level road marathon. I haven't forgotten that. Don't worry. I have not forgotten that. So after doing a mountain effort, now I'm going to go back down to the city, still 5,200 feet above sea level, and get another run in, do a double today. Back at the studio, I'll break down like what's my thought process behind why you should or should not run twice in one day. Ah, oh, what a beautiful moment, ladies and gentlemen. And just... Just like that, we're back in Denver. All right, going for my second run today. So when I say I'm doubling, it just means I'm running twice in one day. Beautiful day, all right. Doubling up 10 miles in the Nike Pegasus 35s. Nike Pegasus 35s. We'll talk about those too. All right, come on. Easy days, easy. Hard days hard. Four strides now, and then into the gym. Woo, baby, come on. So tempting. So tempting, YouTube, we're gonna wait. Come back tomorrow, I will open these shoes with you. Oh, I promise, I promise you, I will not open these shoes without you. Come back tomorrow to see what's inside that box. Yes, the next pair of running shoes has arrived. And so let's start first though with a recap from today. Started off in the Speed Cross 5s and then jumped into the Nike Pegasus 35s for the second run. And running in these guys today confirmed my opinion, just so you know, that I would not run in the 35s past six miles. I think I, I forgot my turbos. I forgot my turbos today. That was my bad. So the next best uh, option in my car were the 35s. And it's a good, I, it's such a comfortable shoe. But I just, I could, f after like, after seven miles or so, my legs are like, okay, feeling a little tired. Time to, time to get a, a little more cushion under my feet. So anyway, that was the experience today in the shoes. And of course, the Big Bad Wolves crushed it uh, going up the mountain today. Just crushed it. And let's jump in now to doubling. So... What, of course, as I've said already, a double is where you run usually in the morning and then again in the afternoon or the evening. And in the summertime, oh, it's so nice to run like after 7 p.m. when it's like the sun is setting, it's cooling off. Oh, man, I just love it. I love it. But the first time I doubled in my life was in college at the University of Colorado under the guidance and leadership of Mark Wetmore. And I had never doubled before in my life. Uh, I, I didn't double in high school at all. And basically, it was Tuesdays and Fridays, so we doubled twice a week. And uh, we would, I would run eight miles in the morning, and then I would come back in the afternoon and usually do like uh, a three-mile warm-up, a workout, and then a three-mile cool-down. So it usually ended up being about nine miles. So it was a big day, and then lifting after that, and we did that twice a week. If I was a high school cross-country or track coach, I would lean away from doubling. Why? High school, high schoolers, ladies and guys are developing so much with height, with strength, 
with a uh, bone structure. Like you're, it's amazing. You don't know it. All you high schoolers out there, like enjoy this moment when you are young and fresh, but I would lean away if I was a high school coach from assigning double runs for runners. Uh, I just think that like body, when you're younger, you're, you, you need to sleep more. And because like, that's when your body is literally like, it's crazy. Kids will go away for the summer and they'll come back in August or September for school. And they're like three or four inches taller. Like that's insane. And when are you growing? It's like, it's when you're sleeping and resting and recovering. So now why would you ever consider doubling running twice in a day? Basically the idea is to get two aerobic stimuluses stimuli into your aerobic system in a 24 hour period. So it's, is it cutting corners? Is it advancing your fitness? Um, I, I'm just going to say, I think it can, I think doubling can be a good thing for your training. I think, um, I think you can make great strides. It, it, obviously you're going to be running more mileage, more kilometers, more minutes on feet. Um, but there's a ridiculous caveat. First of all, scheduling. For all the mamas and the papas out there, like you are busy and who's got time to run twice in one day, right? Well, also think of it this way. Maybe you only have 25 minutes to run in the morning, but you're getting ready for the New York City Marathon in three months and you know that your volume needs to go up like you need more than 35 miles a week you need more like 60 to 75 miles a week well we're busy and you got to drop your kids off at school and you need to go pick up the dry cleaning and so i actually think that if you lead a busy life there's an opportunity to increase your volume by being very strategic in the timing of your runs now you might now you, you got to be thinking ahead that means I need to get my sh my running shoes on twice in one day when I could just be doing it once. I need to be putting all my running gear on twice in one day when I could just be doing it once. And so if you only have 35 minutes in the morning or 45 minutes in the morning, boom, knock out three miles, knock out four miles. And then after work, before you pick the kids up from school, perhaps, or maybe you pick them up from school and then they go play at a friend's house or maybe they go to soccer practice and you've got your running shoes in the back seat of the car and as they're, they're doing an hour practice on the soccer field, you're getting your miles in, you're getting your miles in. I share this example simply to give you an idea of there are ways to get creative with how you train in order to uh, increase the volume of your running because you do need to be running more than 35 miles a week to get ready for a marathon or, you know, even a half marathon, frankly. Um, and so anyway, I just, I, I just want to share that, like, don't be afraid of the double. Don't be afraid of the double. But here is the other major, major, major caveat to this doubling in running. Rest and recovery, rest and recovery. I'm gonna look again to the East Africans and I'm always impressed, I'm always impressed. Just so you know, they are doubling. So like the elite African athletes are doubling most days of the week. Well, they'll run in the morning and they usually run at like 5 a.m. because it can get warm, especially in the summertime for them. And then they'll run again like at 4.30 or 5 p.m. once it starts to cool off. And in my opinion, my thesis behind doubling is that you want to take, and I, I broke this rule today, but you want to take at least 10 hours in between the training sessions, at least 10 hours. So if you are wrapping up your first run in the morning, morning at 8 a.m., that means you're not allowed to run again until 6 p.m. But of course, life happens, like dinner time, picking up kids from the school, like all life happens. And so that is my general rule of thumb though, is that you need to make sure you are resting. And yes, again, the East Africans, like their culture is built around R&R, um, &R, rest and relaxation. Like, and I'm exaggerating a little bit, but they know how to rest in between their hard training efforts. And so if you are a construction worker, or maybe you're delivering for FedEx, or maybe what else would be a steam, or maybe you're like, you're a chef at a restaurant, I would not double because you're on your feet, you're standing, your legs are not exactly recovering really, really, really well in between those, 
those runs in that 10 hour window. And one more story about doubling just to help kind of give you the big, big picture of how it works into training and like what people are doing around the world, elite athletes especially, is Camille Heron. Camille Heron. So I believe, where does she live? Hmm, maybe the Pacific Northwest. I actually, I don't know that. But she just set the world record for the 24-hour race. So it's called the Desert Solstice, and it takes place on a track in, I think, Phoenix, Arizona. And basically, you run around the track for 24 hours. And the goal is to run as far as possible in 24 hours. It's called a timed event, and she is taking the ultra running world by storm, kind of like Courtney DeWalter right now, just like these two ladies are just crushing it at long distances. So Camille ran 162 miles, 260 kilometers in 24 hours. And yes, her training is filled with double runs. Du and now listen, this is her full-time job. It's what she does. Like this is all she does is run. She loves running and she's turned it into her career. And so based on the research I've done, it sounds like she's doubling uh, a lot. Uh, not, it seems like every day of the week I'd have, don't quote me on that, but she's doubling a lot. So in conclusion, in conclusion, I wouldn't, I wouldn't double in high school. I just wouldn't do it. I just don't know if it's quite the right time in life with uh, an athlete's physical development and even frankly mental development. Like you've got schoolwork, you've got friends, you've got uh, just extracurricular activities, applying for college. Like life is, you know, life is pretty busy in high school. So enjoy those years, enjoy those years. Uh, and then in college, boom. I think junior and senior year of college, perfect time to explore doubling fast forwarding to later in life I think if you like if you're 35 to 50 and you are 55 and you just got into the Boston Marathon and you're like okay I got into Boston I got in or I got into New York or I got into Berlin or like you're you're getting ready for a big marathon and you're like okay this is my moment if I don't train well for this race I may not get another shot at a big time marathon in my life I think it's a perfect opportunity to explore doubling, especially if you lead a busy life. If you're an attorney, if you're, uh, if you're, uh, gosh, like working as a nurse, but remember, if you're working as a nurse, that means you're on your feet a lot. So again, you gotta be really careful that you're not overdoing it in the double effect. Moving on to the question of the day, I wrote it down today. Have you ever doubled? Have you ever doubled ever in your life where you ran twice in one day? Do you double now? Huh? Or what questions do you have for me or this incredible YouTube running family about doubling? All right. And listen, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm really, I pro, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to push doubling on anyone. And frankly, I'm not even trying to encourage it. I'm simply trying to open up the vista for all of you like this is a thing in the running world and i think it can benefit specific age groups that are trying to accomplish specific goals Whew, does that make sense oh my goodness what a great day thanks for coming up the mountain today Woo! i'm trying to think if i can make like a little motivational video out of that footage today because i think it was pretty epic i think it was pretty epic all right seek beauty up in the mountains Work hard and love each other. Mm. Thanks for being here. Mm. See you tomorrow. Woo.